Hello grade 11s. Today we are going to revise solving quadratic equations by factorization. Factorization involves the process of making an expression into one term by taking out the highest common factor. In this example, the highest common factor has been taken out of each term, leaving x outside the bracket and x plus 2 inside the brackets, looking for a difference of two squares. For example, this two-term expression of x squared minus 9 is factorized into two brackets of x minus 3 and x plus 3, a trinomial. Using the factors of 2, we open up two brackets in which we have x plus 1 and x plus 2. If these brackets were multiplied out, we would return to the expression x squared plus 3x plus 2 by grouping. In this example, we group the first two terms and the second two terms together. By doing this, we find that there is a highest common factor of x in the first two terms and a highest common factor of negative y in the second two terms. By taking out these common factors, we find that there is a common bracket of a plus b which if we take out as a common factor, we are left with the bracket a plus b multiplied by the bracket x minus y. And the last way to factorize is by the sum or difference of two cubes. x cubed minus 8 can therefore be factorized into two brackets. This first bracket is x minus 2 and the second bracket will be x squared plus 2x plus 4. Let us join table Ho and find out how we can use the method of factorization to solve a quadratic equation. Let's have a look at what we are busy with. Mm -hmm. It looks like you're busy with quadratic equations. You would have covered this work in grade 10 and grade 11. If only I could remember it. Well, let's see if we can jog your memory then. We can start with this first question on your worksheet. What can you tell me about this problem? Well, I know it's an equation and that we need to find the value of x. The problem is that there's an x squared here and an x here. How do we get x on its own so that we can find its value like we do with the other equations? This is a special kind of equation. We call it a quadratic equation. In this case, we need to use a different method to solve for the unknown. How do you know it's a quadratic equation? Well, you just need to know what characteristics to look for. Firstly, quadratic equations always have three terms, and the equation is in the form of ax squared plus or minus bx plus or minus c when equal to zero. In this example, we can clearly see that there are three terms. This x is to the power of two, and this one to the power one. So the powers are in the ratio of 2 to 1. And the equation is in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equal to 0. We can also see in this case that a equals 1, b equals 5, and c equals 6. Okay, now that we know it's a quadratic equation, how do we solve it? Well, in this case, the first step has already been done for us. The first step in solving a quadratic equation is to write the equation in the form ax squared plus or minus bx plus or minus c equal to zero. Aren't they always in that form? Not always. Sometimes we first need to simplify the equation, like in these two examples here. In the second question, in order to get it into the right form, we would first need to get rid of the fractions. In question three, we would need to get rid of the brackets. Do you think you could do that? Hmm. Yes, I think I can. Or at least I'll give it a try. That's the spirit. In this one that has fractions, I think we need to start by putting everything over a lowest common denominator. Spot on, Dewohu. Keep going. The LCM here would be b plus 2 times b plus 1. which means I have to multiply this term by b plus 1, this one by b plus 2b plus 1, 
and this last one by B plus 2. So far so good, Debuho. Before you carry on though, I want us to quickly look at the denominator. When we have an unknown in the denominator, as we do here, we need to be careful with our answers. Remember that we cannot have zero in the denominator. In other words, we have a restriction. In this case, b cannot equal negative 2 or negative 1, since both of these would give us zero in the denominator. I'll have to remember that when we're working out our values for b at the end of the calculation. Now, we can do anything to an equation as long as we do it to both sides. So, if I multiply both sides by the denominator, the denominators will cancel out, leaving me with the numerators on both sides. All I need to do now is multiply out the brackets. Then, I move everything to one side and collect like terms. And there we are. It's in the form of ax squared plus bx minus c equal to zero. That's excellent, Debuho. But can I ask you something? Do you think your answer is in its simplest form? Hmm. Well, I suppose we could take out a common factor of two to make the equation simpler. That was very well done, Debuho. Sometimes an equation might not look like a quadratic at first glance. We need to first simplify it by getting rid of fractions and or brackets before we can tell whether it's quadratic or not. Now that we have the equation in the right form, we can move on to the next step. I know I need two brackets, so I'll write them down. The factors of the first term are 1y and 1y. The factors of 6 are 3 and 2, or 2 and 3, or 6 and 1, or 1 and 6. Now I see which of these, when I cross multiply and add, will give me 5y. So, that is 3 and 2. If I put this into brackets, I get now all I need to do is put in the signs. Uh, how do I know which signs to put in the brackets? Let's see if you can work it out for yourself. Have a look at the original trinomial again. What is the sign in front of the middle term? It's a minus sign. Oh, I see it. These two terms collected should give me negative 5y, not positive 5y. So, this needs to be minus 3y and minus 2y in order to give me minus 5y. I see another clue here was that the last term had a plus sign. So, the two brackets will both be either plus plus or minus minus. In this case, they must add up to minus 5, so minus minus. Well spotted, Debuho. So there is a minus in both brackets. If the sign in front of C is positive, the signs in the brackets will be the same, and they will be the sign in front of the B term. If the sign in front of the C is negative, the signs in the brackets will be different, and the larger number will take the sign of the B term. That will make things a lot easier. Do you think you're ready to try a slightly harder question? Yeah, I think I'm up for a challenge. Why don't you try this next question on your worksheet? All right, here goes. To start off with, I need to make sure it's in the simplest standard form so that I can factorize it more easily. Now, I need the factors of the first and the last terms. The factors of the first term are 2x and 1x. The factors of the last term are... Now we need to cross multiply till we find the factors which subtract to give us 5x. So that is 3 and 4. Let me put that into the brackets. The sign of C is negative, so the signs in the brackets are different. And the bigger number takes the sign of B, which means there is a minus here in this bracket and a plus here in this bracket. Excellent. 
Daniel and Devoho, you have really got the hang of factorizing now. Yes, I do. Well, it does really take a long time to factorize when there are so many factors. Actually, there is another method which is much shorter. But before we look at that, we need to finish off the question we are busy with. What do you mean, finish off? Well, the question asks us to solve for the unknown. What we have done so far is factorize the equation so that we can let each bracket equal zero in order to find the unknown. In other words, we haven't answered the question yet. Ah, yes, I see what you mean. Let me do that quickly. To solve for x, I let each bracket equal zero. Because if the terms are multiplied and are equal to zero, either term could be equal to zero. Now I can move everything to the other side until I have isolated the unknown. So, x equals negative one and a half, or x equals four. That was a really long equation. Do all quadratic equations take this long to solve? Well, the mechanics of calculations are always the same, but the more practice you get, the quicker they are to solve. What we have seen from Tebukho's examples is that we can solve for the values of the unknown variables of a quadratic equation through the use of factorizing. Thank you for joining us, Grade 11s. Remember to look at the tasks for this section in the Equations and Inequalities task video. You'll also be able to learn more about equations and inequalities on our website, www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.